first time in the science fair this year. And not only did our kids have a great time participating here, they went on to the Friendship Science Fair, went on to the District Science Fair, and one of our students was even uh, interviewed on WJLA. We had two district winners. Uh, just amazing. It was a great experience, so we're looking forward to doing that again. Uh, Ann Lyons, bottom left, is our K-2 teacher. She was also a learning coach, just like you guys. Uh, she and her family were stationed on bowling. They were military, uh, and her kids were in this program. They aged out, but she decided she was, had been a teacher in a past life, and she said, I'm going to go back, get my recertification, and be a teacher with you guys, and so she's been with us ever since. Shauna Chastang, you have met her. She is the bomb diggity. She is awesome. If you are being harassed by K-12 enrollment, and I've heard this, I will apologize on behalf of K-12. Please politely say, yes, thank you, I'm taking care of it, and, and say goodbye. Or, or now I've even heard they're coming, like calling from like 202 numbers to kind of mask what they're doing. I am so sorry. We try every year to, to get K, K-12 enrollment. As you can imagine, this is a crazy time of year. So K-12 enrollment manages schools in like 35 different states. And they don't always follow, hello, how are you? They don't always follow the protocol of what they're supposed to stay. And then they keep on harassing you. Like, we know you don't have test scores yet, okay? We don't have test scores yet. You can't produce what you don't have. We know that your health appointments for your kids may not be until August. There's nothing you can, you know what I mean? We get it. So if you're ever not sure, just call Ms. Chestang or email her, but just try to be as polite as you can possibly be and just say, we've got it covered. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Um, Shana Velez, bottom middle, is our special programs coordinator. So if your child has a 504 plan or an IEP, or at some point in time we talk in the year and we want to maybe get a little bit of extra support or talk about whether testing might be appropriate, she's going to be our person that we're going to work with. Claire Pettit uh, also met when Tracy and I worked in the same elementary school. She's awesome. She's our K2 reading specialist. So if you've got a kindergarten first or second grader that needs a little reading support, Claire's your person. And then Maureen Wheeler in the bottom right hand, she is K-5 special education. So that was a very brief, all of them are going to be here with one or two exceptions. All of them are going to be here uh, when we have our open house next Thursday. So I'm going to be sending out information about that. We're going to have an open house from 11 to 1 next Thursday. All of these teachers will be here for you to meet. Say hello, get to know them, go upstairs, see the classrooms, get to see other kids that are going to be in your, in your grade. So hopefully you all can join us then. All right, so we are a public school. Uh, we are one of the campuses of Friendship. Um, they're an awesome um, uh, LEA, Local Education Authority, an awesome school group to work with. Um, they have been growing. They've got, they've got schools in Louisiana and Maryland, and they're the biggest of all of the charter schools in uh, Washington, D.C., and they are phenomenal. We are one of their campuses, so we will send you um, via email a copy of our handbook. We're also going to have printed copies for everybody when you come, uh, either the beginning of the year, when you come for testing, or when you come for the open house. So we'll have hard copies. Uh, they're like 60 pages, though, so we send them by email. Um, if you don't want a, a printed copy, but they're there. Please make sure you're just looking at that because we're kind of unique, so it goes through all of our uh, requirements. So you have picked Friendship That's Online. It. Have any of you ever done traditional homeschooling? Okay, so if you're a traditional homeschool parent, it is up to you to decide on what curriculum your child takes. Uh, you have to pick the reading, the math, all of the subject areas. That's not what we are. We're like an, an awesome blend of homeschooling and public schooling. So your child is a public school student registered with Friendship that will be going to school from home the majority of the time. But because they're a public school, you've picked an entire curriculum. It's a rigorous curriculum. It is challenging. Um, and we have the ability to differentiate that curriculum for real if we believe your student would benefit from working at a, at a higher or a lower level because we want them to be successful. But you have picked reading, math, science, history, all of the subjects, and they're all required. Um, but the only course we do have a little flexibility with is music. So you will see that you, especially the K-5, the 6th, 7th, and 8th might not even have it loaded. But uh, K-5 has a music course. If you choose not to take that, that is completely up to you. We have parents that opt out because their kids take music lessons outside of school. 
um, or uh, they opt out for religious reasons. So if you don't want music, all you gotta do is let me know, shoot me an email, I'll take care of it and we'll remove it and it's, and it's not an issue. But everything else is, is a requirement. And it's a really good curriculum. One of the cool things, because it comes from K-12, in a traditional school, they go through cycles of textbooks. So you get a textbook and it's yours for five years, at a minimum. Uh, K-12, because so much is online, it can be changed every year. It can be changed mid-year, when Pluto wasn't a planet anymore. Like, they changed it <laughs> right away. Um, and the middle school curriculum is, is almost completely online. Um, and so they have the ability to make any adaptations. Sometimes kids or parents find errors. That happens, right? The, the editor missed something. So if you see an error in the curriculum, let them know. They'll make that change. It's kind of cool. Um, so the reason I ask you guys to come in is because learning coaches, well, students are the most important part of our school, but the learning coaches have the most important role. So you all, as your child's learning coach, parents, whether it's one person at home or more than one person, people at home, it is your responsibility to help facilitate the academic day. We don't expect you guys to be teachers. That's why we have teachers on staff. Our teachers are highly qualified and have been doing this for many, many years. But as the learning coach at home, the more importance you place on the education each day, the more seriously your kids are gonna take it. Um, this is where I usually let Miss Ryder take over because she was a learning coach. But she talks about the fact that she set up a schedule before the school year started with her kids. Your kids should not be going to school in their pajamas, right? There should be a wake up time, there should be breakfast, there should be a schedule that says, hey, we're gonna get up and start work at this time. If you've got a little one, sometimes little ones like to get up and start working at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, that's awesome. If you're older, I saw an eye roll back there, maybe you wanna sleep in till 8.30, right? And that's okay. We expect students to be going to school during normal school hours. I have seen kids working at two o'clock in the morning. I shouldn't see that. We have access to see what time students are. We shouldn't see people working at two in the morning, right? Our kids should be going to school during normal school hours, but that doesn't mean that you can't kind of set your own schedule. So if you've got a couple of kids and you want to start with little ones earlier in the day and you want to start with, with older students a little bit later, that's great, right? That, that's fine because you do have that flexibility. We're going to talk about Class Connect sessions in just a few minutes, uh, and those are, those are required times that students need to be online with their teachers, but for the most part, you've got some flexibility in your day. So you have to be at home, you can't go out to work during the day. Um, and please don't send your child into their room to do their work. We want to believe that our students are gonna do exactly what we tell them to do, but we're all old enough to know that they don't, right? <laughs> so we don't want them to be you know, completely you know, surrounded by noise and everything. We have to have a, a good space for them to learn, but it also has to be someplace where you are interacting with them because Kids do pull up other things on the computer. Kids do get distracted and do other things when they're supposed to be doing work. That's what kids do, right? It's their kids. Uh, so it is so important that you are there monitoring their day. Not breathing over their shoulders, but really monitoring what they're doing. Checking their plan, and we're gonna continue to talk about that. But the more committed you are, the more successful your child is going to be. And, and no matter what I ever ask why a parent has chosen this school, it is always, the, the, the top reason is that they are always wanting to put their child's education at the forefront of, of the importance in the household. And if you keep that, you know, every once in a while, if, if I have to have a conversation somewhere down the line with a student who's not doing what they're supposed to be doing, it's always because that idea, even though it started at the beginning of the year, has kind of gone by the wayside. And we've kind of just allowed things to, to go and things come up and things get in the way and life gets in the way. And we get that. We're adults. We know life. My commute got in the way today, right? Yeah. But we have to make sure that we get back to that original thought of this is why I brought my child here in the first place because I wanted to support them in their educational goals. So your role is so important. That's why Mrs. Ryder is gonna be such a great person for you. Each week on Thursdays, when, when our students are here, she's gonna be hosting parent sessions. She's done things from explaining the online school, talking about how to best support your students. She also supports you all in some different activities. She's had CPR training, she's had hospitality training. She organizes um, all of our field trips so that you as parents have the opportunity to come out and work with other parents and meet them and, and do kind of fun things during the year. 
Um, so please rely on Mrs. Ryder. She's so sorry she can't be here today, but she is going to help you in your role as learning coach, as are we and as are your teachers. But she's going to be a great go-to person. So students have very important roles too, right? I just said no pajamas, except maybe like if they've done a great job, maybe have a pajama day, right? Have, well, once every once in a while is not a bad thing. But every student needs to know that they need to get up in the morning, they need to get their things ready, they need to, whatever chores they need to do in the morning, have them done before the school day starts. That doesn't mean they're gonna sit in front of a computer all day. We don't want that, right? One of the cool things about this is when you're finished a lesson, get up, go for a walk, do something for 15 minutes before you start the next activities. A lot of kids come here because they just, they can't sit still in a classroom, right? And that's okay, they don't have to sit still all day long, right? They can talk, they can do things. Um, but they do need to do their work. Every day your student is going to have a daily plan. So if you're a student, this is really important. This is one of the coolest things about our school is you have a checklist of things that you have to do. Once you've completed all of them, the day is yours. No homework, okay? Zero homework, which I think is pretty awesome because I was never a huge fan of homework. So if you get up in the morning and you get all your work done by 1.30 in the afternoon, the rest of the day is yours to do with whatever it is you want to, right? Whether it be playing a sport that you like to play or just getting out with your friends and doing things. So the day is, is really in your control. If you mess around and you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing and you haven't finished your lessons, then, you know, four o'clock you might still have a couple of things to do. So as parents, your job is to say, this is your list. This is what you have to accomplish. If by the end of the day your kid says I'm done and they only have two lessons done, mm -mm. every single day they will have a math lesson. If they tell you they don't, it is not true. <laughs> every <laughs> single day. Every yeah. single day they will have every ELA lessons. Right? Never a day without ELA and math. Uh, history and science will often flip. Art, health, you might not have those every single day, but every day. So usually, I would say about five lessons a day that they have to start, take any assessments that go with those lessons, and complete them, and then they're done. So I think it's a great incentive to say, hey, if you're finished by two o'clock, you know, we're gonna go out and do this, or we're, you know, we, you've, you've got this time back in your day. Um, and I, I think that's really important, because so many traditional schools, you're there from eight in the morning until four in the afternoon, and there's no time for any free time. You come home with homework, and I remember my daughter in high school used to be up until one, two in the morning sometimes, and it was absolutely ridiculous. So this is great, and it will teach them that if you get your work done, then you can do what it is you want to do, and that's kind of a good lesson in life. Right? Yes. Um, and yes. certainly for high school and for college. So uh, they're also going to have class connect sessions, and I'm sorry it's so small, but you can see right there. There's a little space that says Class Connect Sessions. So Class Connect Sessions are when you're working live with your teacher. There'll be a live link that all you have to do is click. When the time for the class starts, you click on that, it pulls you into that online classroom, and the teacher knows you're there, it pulls your name up because you have to go in through your own account. So make sure students, you're using your own accounts. Parents, you have yours, students have yours. Use that, or otherwise you're coming with your mom's name. So you wanna come in with your own name, and then you're gonna work directly with your teacher. She's gonna give you a schedule of those classes and there's gonna be other kids. Sometimes it'll be maybe just two or three kids. Sometimes it'll be maybe 15 or 20 kids. But she's gonna give you a schedule of when those classes are gonna be. And your responsibility is to get there on time. Sometimes they'll only be a half an hour or 45 minutes. If you show up 15 minutes late, you're gonna miss half of what the teacher said. We're also gonna call you. <laughs> One of my roles is when students don't show up to class, I have to get on the phone. So you can imagine, yes, Mrs. Brosnahan, we're coming. You can get in up to 15 minutes before class starts. So if you know you've got a 10 o'clock class, don't wait until 10.05 to log in because the computer may not log you in as fast as you want. You may come in late. You may miss some important instruction. So use those cell phones. Most kids have them. Set an alarm on your cell phone so you know it's time to go before the class starts. So those class connect sessions are super important. And your teachers, when they talk to you and you get to have a conference with them, they're going to be telling you more about that. All right, so attendance is super important. Oh my gosh, how cute is she? Attendance is super important. Just because a student logs onto the computer, that does not register attendance. It is the learning coach's job to add attendance every single day. The attendance will come through each course. 
So by the end of the day, you should have logged attendance for math, for ELA, for science, or history, or PE. So that's the learning coach's role. And again, your teacher is gonna show you exactly how to do it and where to do it. But it's super important that learning coaches, you do it every day because we have responsibilities that if, if, if your student has not had attendance log, they're considered truant and we actually have to call Child and Family Services. We'll call you before that and say, please check your attendance. But if you can get into the habit of doing it every single day, that will help us a great deal. We don't want to track you down, we don't want to bug you, but it's so important that you log that attendance every day. And again, your teachers are gonna show you exactly where to do it and how to do it. Um, by the end, of, we expect about five hours a day. Um, some days might be a little bit more, some days might be a little bit less, but the Public Charter School Board says for our program, five hours is a reasonable time. By the end of the year, that's 900 hours. Most families have way past 900 hours because you want to log everything. If you are reading a book before bed, that's reading time. If you are practicing math facts in the car, that's math time. If you go to a history museum, that's history time. If you are playing uh, a sport, that's PE time. So all of those things you can log. <laughs> oh my goodness, I just want to eat her up. Um, hi. Um, if you are any anything that you're doing that that can can be part of an education, and there are so many things that we do outside of the books that are part of education, you wanna make sure that you're logging that time. There's also a place for supplemental hours. So if your child is uh, doing something maybe, you know, in the community, volunteering their time, we wanna add those as supplemental hours. So there are so many different ways that you can log attendance. Your role is just to make sure that you remember to do it. <laughs> And again, please stop me. I'm community. talking fast to try to make sure that we get through this and I don't take too much of your time, but please stop me. So, is there anybody that's not yet gotten their computer? Awesome. Okay. So, I will tell you right now that the K 12 computers are good, they are not MacBook Pros. Sorry, I don't get one either. I get what you get. So, I, I do know that this year they have upgraded for new students. So all of the new students that have come in have gotten upgraded technology. You should have tech supports number right on the cover of your laptop. You should have everything you need there. But it's important to take care of it, okay? Trust me, we've had computers replaced because kids threw them. We've had computers replaced because kids left them outside in the rain. It is true. Um, we got <laughs> lots of lots of different reasons. In the way. So we understand that accidents happen, but if, for example, you plan on moving around a lot with your computer, maybe get a soft-sided cheap case to put it in, so that if you're taking it on the bus or taking it on a trip, that if you drop it by accident, it doesn't break. Um, it is so tempting to click on pop-ups. So for all the students in here. If a pop-up comes up and says that you've won $1,000 if you click on this flashing banner, please don't do it because you have not won $1,000, okay? It's also tempting to, to download games and to go to YouTube and to do all of those things. I get it, it's tempting. But if you're gonna do that, do it on your tablet or whatever else you have, not on your K-12 computer. Because if your K-12 computer isn't working, you can't do school. And if you can't do school, you're gonna have to go to the library. It's gonna be a big hassle. If you have trouble with your computer, please call tech support. Don't sit for five days and have us call, why haven't you logged in? Well, the computer's not working. The minute it stops working, call tech support. If they can't fix it, we'll get you a new computer. We get it, it happens. Just make sure that you're staying on top of it. I can tell you that one of the most important things you can do every single day, control, shift, and delete. Not control, alt, delete. Control, shift, delete. You'll get a little pop-up and it'll say, do you want to get rid of your cookies and your history and all of that? If you do that every day, it's kind of like brushing your teeth in the morning. It cleans out everything out and it helps you. So if you can't log into a Class Connect session, nine times out of 10, I'll say, try Control, Shift, Delete. And all of a sudden, once you go through that, it takes a minute or two and all of a sudden you can um, get back in. It clears out all the downloads and things like that. So it's just a really easy thing to do every single morning to get it going and, and work it. So the other thing, as learning coaches, you just have to make sure you've got high-speed internet. That's, that's a, a requirement of the program. It doesn't work without high-speed internet. And if for something, you know, for some reason something happens, then make sure you know where the closest library is because the libraries will let you get there. They'll let you print. They'll let you do classes and things like that. As long as you can get there, uh, they'll be able to accommodate you if for some reason your internet goes down. So your teachers have been hopefully calling you or sending you emails to set up times to talk. Um, they're going to conference with you throughout the year. 
And kids, we want you to be a part of that conference too, right? You came here, you're the ones doing the schoolwork, so we want students to be a part of those conversations. Your teachers are gonna give you their cell phones. If you've got a question, you can text your teacher, okay? Your teacher will text you back. You can email your teacher, your teacher will email you back because they wanna help. Your tutors are gonna give you their cell phone numbers. So be respectful, all right? Every once in a while I'll get a, you know, a text or a call at 6 a.m. Please don't call at 6 a.m. <laughs> uh, you know, but, but really, if you send an email, if you ask for help, you will get it, I promise you. So reach out to them, use that. They, the reason that they're here, trust me, we get paid a lot less than teachers in Washington, D.C. It is what it is, we get paid a lot less. We're not D.C. employees, we're K-12 employees. But our teachers know how this program has just changed the trajectory of so many lives of so many different students. They're committed, that's why they're here, that's why they stay. Um, so make sure you're getting to know your teacher. Don't be embarrassed to say, I hate math and I'm really bad in it, or I am struggling with reading. That's okay, if we don't know, we can't help. So it's very important that you communicate, talk to them, make sure that you're checking your email. If they call you or they email you, you're calling them back. Those Class Connect sessions that I talked about, your teacher will give you a schedule for it. Those are super, super important. If you know you've got a Class Connect session every Tuesday at 11 o'clock, don't schedule uh, a trip to the grocery store for 11 o'clock or a checkup, right? We understand that emergencies happen. If in fact you can't, please let your teacher know. Because like I said, we're gonna be calling. Mr. Sloan and I spend a whole lot of time on the phone in the morning saying, your class started five minutes ago, why are you not in class? So if you can't, if it's an emergency and your child cannot be there, send an email, send a text, make a call, just let us know. We do record the session, so if you have, a, if you have an emergency and you, you know, the only time the doctor can fit you in is during that time, you can come home and watch that session later. Um, Does and that count as an Not if you watch the session, okay? So we, live is better because then you can communicate with the teacher and ask questions. Um, but if you, if you can and it's an emergency, you can go back and we've got record of if a student watches the recording of that. Good question, thank you. All right, face to face, Mr. Sloan really, really briefly talked about that. We get to meet here, we're so lucky that we get to meet at this campus and as I said, we come in from Western Prince William County and sometimes in the morning it'll take us the better part of two hours to get here, it is 100% worth it. Um, we want to get to know our students. We want to get to know our families. So we make a point of coming here um, a lot. Uh, we're switching a little bit this year because our middle school platform is changing and the students are gonna have a lot of independent responsibilities. We wanna make sure that they have the time to complete the assignments they need. So instead of every Thursday, we're meeting the first two Thursdays of every month. Uh, they'll, students will rotate between their teachers um, learning coaches that choose to stay can meet with uh, Mrs. Uh, Ryder. She's going to send out a weekly schedule of what she's going to be doing. And uh, for everyone else, you get three hours of freedom uh, to do with what you choose. So I think you're going to find that you need that three hours of freedom <laughs> every once in a while. Um, it'll, it'll be nice just to be able to take a walk or you know do shopping or whatever it is that you choose to do. 10 to 1. We'll have snack. We don't do lunch, but we'll have snacks so nobody will go hungry. Um, and then at one o'clock, they're, they're, they're free to come back, back to you guys and, and do a little bit more work throughout the day. But we do find that it's worth it. The kids really enjoy it. They like to meet their other friends and they make tons of friends. One of the cool things about this is because everybody comes from a unique perspective, all of the kids really seem like they want to learn, like that's why they're here. So we rarely, if ever, have behavioral problems. I mean, it is, it is very unusual for us to have to pull a student out and talk to them because they're misbehaving. And it's, it's a really neat atmosphere that the kids come and they're all like, you're here to learn, I'm here to learn, we're here to be friendly and have a good time, certainly, but it's, it's a really nice learning environment and, and I, I hope everybody will find that that's the case. Um, so we're excited to start that. Uh, and that will be the first Thursday in September, which I believe is September 5th. Um, work samples. If your student is kindergarten through Ten to grade, one. it's really the parent's responsibility to make sure that those work samples are submitted. It'll be one or two things a month. The teachers will tell you exactly what they want, 
and you can either bring it to the face-to-face -face session or be a, there'll be a way to submit it online. For middle school students, all of your assignments that are due, that, are, that you have to submit, those will all be in your schedule and your teachers will talk to you about all of those and what those due dates are. So just make sure that you're listening to your teacher, that you're reading emails. All of our communication for the most part goes through email. So students, you have your own email accounts. Students should be checking their own email every single day. Every time we send an email or a teacher sends an email to a student, the learning coach is automatically copied. So you get a copy of exactly what the teacher has sent to the student. So, uh, but it's very important that the students check their own email as well. Ready? Please stop me if you have questions. Please stop me. So academic progress, this is a mastery-based curriculum. So what that means is in a, in a traditional school, the, the teacher goes through, she's got a book, she goes through the entire year. Uh, you might take a test and, and two kids might fail it, one kid might get a, you know, a 70, just barely passing it, a couple of might be okay, a couple of A's. But regardless, that teacher keeps moving on. So the kids that failed that test, well, good luck, right? And it's, it, they have to catch up and they have to catch up. Or if the teacher spends so much time fixing the, the students who maybe didn't pass the test, then the ones who were way advanced just sit there and there's nothing for them to do. That's not the case here. In a mastery-based curriculum, students move at a pace that is comfortable. So as you're taking a test, you're completing it, you've done a lesson, there's a uh -oh. little assessment that goes with it. If you don't pass it and you get a zero, that doesn't mean you get an F. What that means is you probably rushed through the lesson, you probably didn't take your time, maybe you didn't take notes, maybe you really didn't understand it at all. So that's where the learning coach comes in. The learning coach says, hey, all right, you got a zero, let's go back and let's look at this lesson again. Maybe let's take some notes, let's do some practice. And they take it again and then they pass it, then it's time to move on. If they don't pass it a second time and you know that they've really tried hard, maybe that's when you text the teacher or send an email and say, hey, can I get your time for five or 10 minutes to explain this? We're not quite sure. And to be honest with you, I remember when my kids were in middle school and they got to some level of math that I hadn't done in a very long time. It's a little, you know, you panic a little bit, okay? No, we don't expect you to remember all you learned in algebra or whatever it was, okay? So reach out to the teacher. There are some things that you might not know, and that is okay. Um, so make sure that if your child is not mastering, that you reach out to the teacher. We're gonna do some assessments at the beginning of the year to try to make sure that all students are in the right <laughs> curriculum. But if you notice that it's taking your student three or four hours to get through one lesson, maybe they're in a, a level that's a little too difficult. Maybe we need to revisit that or maybe we need to get them tutoring so that they can get through these lessons in a reasonable amount of time. But as they make progress throughout the year by taking these assessments and turning in their work, those progress levels will go up. So we hope that by the end of the year they've made it through 100% of the curriculum. They have to make it through 80, right? If you only make it through 50% of sixth grade math, you're not ready for seventh grade math. So they have to make it through at least 80%. And we're gonna be monitoring that progress all year. And that's where report cards come from. There is absolutely no reason that every student in this school should not get straight A's. There's zero reason. If you're not getting straight A's, it's because you're not doing all of your assignments every day, you're not turning your work in, or you're not attending Class Connect or face-to-face -face sessions. If you do all of those things, you will get straight A's in this school. And then, if you're an eighth grader, you have the choice of your lifetime to go on to high schools in this district. Every student that has really worked hard and has done what they're supposed to do has gotten into their choice of high school. Mm. It, it is a, a wonderful thing because the only reason students don't get straight A's is because they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing every day. So if your child is not making progress, we're gonna call you and say, hey, what's the matter? Why are we not making progress? And then we're gonna look, you know, dig, dig down a little bit deeper. Are they not completing all of the math lessons that they're supposed to complete and are those piling up? Because in this program, if you choose to skip a lesson, it doesn't go away. It's just like a bill, right? <laughs> you don't pay your bill, then no way. You just get another one the next month. So that's Double. what happens to lessons, right? If you go, oh, I really don't wanna do math today. It doesn't go away, it just moves to the next day. And if you keep moving them because you keep not doing them, it all of a piles sudden, up. you've got this pile of lessons and now it's panic time. Right? So please make sure that you're monitoring every single day that your student is making that progress. And we're gonna be monitoring too, and that's where our report cards come from, okay? So please just keep a close eye on that. 
middle school students, anybody in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, you are going to have a calendar of, of things, of classes that you need to take every single day, of lessons that are your responsibility, of assignments that need to be turned in. You don't want to get too far behind because if you get too far behind, then they truly do go away. And then you don't get to make them up. And then you have trouble picking your grade up. So we are trying to make sure that our middle school students understand that they have independent responsibility every single day. Learning coaches, we want you to help and support them, but we want them to be ready for high school and to be independent learners. But we have to model that behavior, right? It's not something that kids just know. They have to be taught how to do that, and that's through your support. All right, park testing. Raise your hand if you took the park test last year. You guys take park? You didn't take park? No? Only one student took park. Wow, okay. So park is DC's state assessment. Um, as of next year, the District of Columbia and Illinois will be the only two places using park. It started out with like 30 states. There was actually one Everybody state that stopped now. testing in the middle of the year and now. said, we're not even doing this. It is a challenging test, but it is a requirement and it is one by which our school gets judged. Every year our students score well above the district average on this test, every single year. Uh, last, we don't have our scores for this year, but last year our students scored the highest, our middle school, highest ELA of all of the Friendship Charter Schools, which is pretty good because Friendship has a lot of tier one schools. Um, so we will prepare your students. It is a mandatory thing, we can't get out of it. Um, we try to make it as relaxed and as enjoyable as possible. We spread it out over a couple of weeks uh, to make sure that students aren't doing more than one, you know, too much work during the day. I will ask you, and I'll, now I'll, I'll back up in a second. I will ask you, please do not schedule any family vacations for May. All right, as soon as I get you, the, or as soon as I have the dates, I will get them to you. It's usually the first two weeks in May, so please just don't do anything. But that reminds me on attendance. Because this school is open 24, 7, 365, if you choose to take your vacation outside of the school calendar, you may do so. Right? So for example, it may be really expensive to go on a trip over the, the winter holidays. If you want to do that the week before or the week after, that's completely up to you. You can work ahead. You can work while you're there, right? Some people say, I'm going to go stay with my mom for a week and I'm going to bring the laptop and we're going to, as long as there's an, an internet connection, you can do that. The one thing I say, please don't do it in May because park is mandatory. We have to get everybody here because that's how our school gets, gets judged. And we want to be judged as a good school because we want students who are coming and ready to work. Um, but you're, if, as long as you're you know, working on, on pace and if you want to take a vacation and, and, and head out on, on your family week and then do your work maybe while other students are taking a vacation, that's completely up to you. Just let your teachers know and let us know. Um, we are also going to do NWEA testing. All right, raise your hand if you took the NWEA. You took all these tests. That's no, not the NWEA either? All right, the NWEA is actually a really good test. So I'm gonna be sending an email out um, to students and to parents uh, later this week and giving you times next week and all of the following the first week of school where you can come in. I'm gonna give you a block of time. Kids are gonna come in, take this test. It's actually a really good test. It's a test as they say in the testing world, without a ceiling, which means that your students will take the assessment based on the grade level where they enter. So a second grader will start getting questions on a second grade level. If that second grader is advanced, they're gonna get them right, and those questions are gonna get harder. Until a point at which case the second grader goes, I have no idea what this is, then they start taking guesses, they get it wrong, and then it levels it out. So what it gives us is a really good idea of where your student is starting during the year. So if a sixth grader comes in and they're working on an eighth grade math level, there is no way we want them to be doing sixth grade math, right? It's not gonna challenge them. In the same way, if that sixth grader comes in and is working on a fourth grade math level, they're not gonna understand sixth grade math. So we might say, hey, we're gonna get you some books, we're gonna help you support your student, we're gonna get you tutoring to get them back up towards grade level. So it gives us a really good idea of where they're starting. Your teachers are gonna meet with you and say, okay, this is where we're starting, where do we wanna go? Because every student, regardless of where they come in, we want them to grow. So if you come in at grade level, we want you to be at grade level next year for your next grade. If you come in above grade level, we want you to leave above grade level. We want you to grow. And the same thing, if you come in below grade level, our goal is going to be try to get you closer to grade level. 
So your teachers are going to talk to you. They're going to give you goals. Your students are going to know what their goals are. We're going to take that test again in, uh, in December, and then we're going to take it again at the end of the year. And our goal is to have every student grow at least one year while they're here with us for a year. And we're going to do everything possible to try to make that happen. When is the first one? The first one, I'm going to send out an email. I'm going to be here Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Thursday will be our open house, and then I'm going to be here most days the following week, and I'll give you just a, a like a time frame um, so that students can come in. The test takes, for middle school students, it should take about an hour. For little guys, it should take a half an hour, 40 minutes. You can take both on the same day. We'll have snacks here. Uh, you can come back two different days. So every once in a while, a student will come. It's not timed, so sometimes kids will take an hour and a half. And we might say, hey, you know what, why don't you come back another day and take the other one. We don't want to stress you out. We want them to do their best. And then if you've got K-2s, um, any kindergarten, first or second graders in here, uh, Mrs. Lyons, as your teacher, will be doing a, an assessment called Dibbles, which is a reading assessment. It gives us a really good idea of where students are starting, make, making sure that we can support them in their, in their reading development. Um, so those are all the required tests that we'll have to take. All right. So, Seems weird that I've got a thing about, about runners here. Um, one, of the, one of the things that is, that is so important is, is that we let our children know what they are capable of. So indulge me for just a second. There was this really good runner. His name was Roger Bannister. And back in 1954, before that, they said it was absolutely impossible to run a mile in less than four minutes. And Roger Bannister disagreed with that, and he said, no way, I'm going to do it. And up until that, no human being had ever run a mile faster than four minutes. And he did it in 1954. Within six weeks, somebody else did it. And within that year, many, many people had, had done it. And now today, it's, it's the standard for high school athletes to break four minute miles. So just because someone said it's impossible, doesn't mean it is. All right, so stick with me for just a second. I'm gonna do something really silly. I need a couple of seconds here, and I need kids to do it too, okay? So you're gonna take your good hand, good hand. and your finger, and your other hand, yeah. and you're gonna tap your palm as many times as you can in five seconds. Just bear with me. I want you to do it as fast as you can, and I'm only gonna give you five seconds. All right, ready? Hold on a second. Kids you need to do this too, this is so important. All right, <laughs> hold on, let me, get my, let me get my stopwatch here. All right, stopwatch, okay. On your mark, get set. Go. Stop. Okay, you got a number? You know how many times you did it? Yep. Okay. Now. Oh, no! Oh, my gosh. I noticed the, kid, the kids had the numbers. Good job. The kids had the numbers. All right. All right. So, whatever that number was, the only thing I need, I don't care if you change the way you count, I don't care what you do, you just have to go faster. All right? Just make it faster this time than the first time. All right? Make sure you count. On your mark. Get set. Go. So, did you get a higher number? Yes. The first time I told you, the first time I told you to do it, I told you you had to go as fast as you could. Oh, so how do you go faster than How do you go faster than faster than you can? <laughs> the only reason is because I told you you needed to. Yeah. So learning coaches, when your student says, I can't, you can. What do we need to do? I don't care if we have to change it up. Do we have to change our schedule? Do we have to get you tutor? But you can do it, OK? Because I told you you can. And if you believe you can, you can, right? So my last slide, second to last slide. What gets recognized gets repeated, okay? If you're a kid, raise your hand if you've had that kid in your classroom that all he did or she did was try to annoy the teacher or the students around them, <laughs> right? Did the teacher yell at that kid? Did that kid get a lot of attention in the classroom? Because what gets recognized gets repeated, right? I remember when I was teaching in the classroom, I would have kids doing something. I wouldn't even look up, I'd say, do you want me to yell at you? Because if you do, I will, but I'd much rather say something good about you. And it would generally stop. Because what gets recognized gets repeated. So if you've asked your child to get up and be ready to start school at nine o'clock, 
and they're up and ready to start school at 9 o'clock. Recognize that. Say thanks so much. I so appreciate that I did not have to drag you out of bed this morning. That's awesome. Good work. If your child finishes the lessons that they have in their, in their you, you should expect that they finish it. But if they do, recognize that because they're going to repeat it. Kids want to be appreciated. Kids want to please. Okay, we all do. Everybody loves to get recognized, right? And But for kids, to be honest with you, they're going to get recognized any way they can. So we want to recognize them in a positive way. Is every day going to be positive? No. Are there some times when you're going to have to drag them out of bed? Yes. But when they do it right, recognize it and say, I so appreciate that. And give them a little high five. If they've done all their lessons by the end of the week, you don't have to give them a $20 bill, but let's say, hey, let's go, you know, let, let's watch a movie or let's bake cookies or do something simple. Uh, let's, let's go out for a walk together or just enjoy, you know, something simple. We're going to recognize that too. So for all the kids, we have this program called Scholar Dollars. We started it last year. It's really cool. They're these little, I can show you. Uh, they're these little cool little things that look just like dollars. <laughs> And we started it last year. Okay, they look just like dollars. Um, we started it last year, and we use scholar dollars to reward students for good things. Um, we're going to start right in the beginning of the year. And if you show up to class on time, you're going to get scholar dollars. If you tune in assignments on time, you're going to get scholar dollars. Those scholar dollars are actually worth something, right? I don't work for free. You don't work for free. These scholar dollars are worth something. So every quarter we're going to do something different. Last year we had auctions. Uh, we actually even at the end of the year for our middle school students auctioned off free essays or like assignments. Like so we said if you know you haven't written this essay yet and you want to buy your way out of this essay you may buy your way out of this essay. <laughs> that was a huge seller. Kids saved their money for that. Okay? So we, we want to recognize kids. There are going to be uh, gift cards that are sent out. Mrs. Ryder is going to recognize learning coaches because if you recognize people, they're going to do what you're recognizing them for. All right, that's what I do. So we like we like recognition too. Um, so this is my last slide. I promise. This was just an email from a teacher who uh, a parent whose son came to us in sixth grade. He had some concerns about his son, and so he decided I'm going to stay home with him. I'm going to do everything that I can. Uh, and he said, thank you for all the support of the past three years. If it wasn't for all of you, things would probably have turned out different in a negative way. You have been great. Best wishes to all of you for the future continued great work of providing excellent education. This was a student who came to us because his dad was concerned that he was not going to be successful in middle school. By the time he left us, he was taking high school algebra. He had his choice of every school that he applied to, he was accepted to, including DeMatha. Um, and, and this was a student who may not have been as successful had he not made this choice. So again, you've chosen up us for a reason. We are here to support that. We are going to work with you as a team. There may be times when we have difficult conversations. That's okay, right? Life's not all about working and, and everything working perfectly. Mm -hmm. So if we have to have those, it's because we care mm -hmm. and because we've seen what works and we know what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So trust us to help you, to help your student, because that's why we're all here. And, and I hope this is going to be an absolutely amazing school year. Every day will not be uh, you know, lemonade and roses. Trust me, there are going to be days when you are pulling your hair out wondering why you did this and why you chose this. Don't sit and suffer in silence. Let us know, right? If you're frustrated, we don't want that to happen. Let us know why. Our teachers have done this for such a long time. We may be able to say, hey, instead of that, why don't you try this? And that might be the, the change that makes the difference. So I hope this is going to be an awesome year. I hope we see all of you next week to meet the teachers for um, our open house. Mr. Sloan is sending an email with that information. I'm going to send an email with testing information. Check your email every day. Please, 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 if your phone number changes, let us know so that we can contact you. I do so, so, I got you out in under an hour. I so appreciate you coming in today. I am done talking. But I'm staying here as long as you need me. Any questions, I'm sure there are things that I haven't answered. There are probably questions you don't even know you have yet. Um, so I'm here as long as you need me. But I appreciate you guys taking the time to come in today uh, to get to know us. And uh, I'm looking forward to a really great school year. Any questions I can answer? I have a question about parking. So if we drive, are we allowed to use the parking lot? You are allowed to use the parking lot 
to drop off um, or if you are staying, if you've signed up to stay on Thursday, yes, you are allowed. There's also street parking. Um, and it's been two years now, maybe even longer, that this street has been under construction. I am very hopeful that it will not continue. We've come here and the road's blocked. Like, what do you mean the road is blocked? You gotta let us in. Um, but th there's, there's generally parking to be found. 